Yes, it's time for Blinka. There's a lot of stuff going on. And Python and hardware. Sing a lot today. Okay, Code Plus community. Today, uh, we joined an another community. Which community? Well, it was the Hack Day community. Oh, yeah, because we did that hack chat today. Yeah, so we did a hack chat, Python, and the Internet of Things. Um, Dan, Katni, and Scott, and you and myself it was a jam-packed yeah. and david stell showed up david when, we, when we mentioned circuit scheme yeah when you say it three times he just comes out up. <laughs> and uh we talked about uh it was about internet of things and a lot of people just had questions about circuit uh, python so we answered a bunch of those and we did a live broadcast behind the scenes so you could see what we were doing and we talked about things like this is a project that i made it's a little countdown clock to the talk about internet of things in python and at the end we gave away five um, year passes to Adafruit IO. And I'll talk about some Adafruit IO stuff uh, towards the end of the show. But um, this is kind of neat. Alex, uh, the CTO at, at Hackaday did this poster. I uh, can't wait to, the, I said, hey, when I saw this poster, I'm like, hey, like, you should do a poster book. I saw this cool Atari book where you, you can pull out the posters. And they're almost up to 100 hack chats, so I think they're going to do it. Ooh. And uh, next show that I do, I'll, they announced the Hackaday prize. Um, I'll, uh, I'll talk about that when I get all the information. They just announced it today. So anyways, that's what we did earlier today. Um, and if you want to, you can go to the hackaday.io logs for that. You can relive the fun, and you can also look at the video that's on YouTube and see how we run this stuff behind the scenes. Big news, uh, more big news. So a while back, uh, we didn't know about this until people told us, TI is using CircuitPython on their calculators. But not only that, they have this little add-on device that's basically kind of like a trinket. And the cool thing is people are like, you know what, I have Adafruit hardware, maybe I can use that TI version of CircuitPython and just flash my Circuit Playground or a trinket. And the answer is yes. Yeah, it just looks like the VAD or PAD, but then you can plug in any CircuitPython board and it becomes like an old CircuitPython REPL, yeah. which is adorable. And so if you're, if you're keeping score out there, there's the Casio calculator that uses MicroPython. There's NumWorks. There's NumWorks, which uses MicroPython. There's the TI-83 um, that uses CircuitPython. So it's a Python world, and um, I'm glad that we don't have to worry about putting it on a calculator because someone else did. Yay, open source. Yeah. So um, we'll try to find out more. It's only in France right now. France has a really good program for programming, and so they're learning lots of math in the um, national program languages, Python. So that's why they're getting this stuff first, which is always weird to see, like, Texas Instruments having stuff that's only available in France. Like, what happened? Oh, cool. The I, li cool. I live in the U.S. I know where Texas is. Anyhow, True. Um, we're still working on Circuit Python uh, four. Look um, to beta six. Beta six. We're almost up to release candidate. Very exciting. So that's going to be coming out soon. Um, we have a lot of Pi portals out, and I grabbed this tweet because we work really hard on stuff. And this person, Dan Jackson, summed it up better than we ever could. Adafruit Pi portal is super fascinating. It mounts to the USB drive, edits the code, and when you save the file, it auto reboots and runs it. Control C at the serial console drops directly into the Python REPL. That's a better dev environment than I have for most of my professional career. Yes, thank you, Dan. That's exactly what we've been trying Dan. to do. This is, this is us saying, wouldn't it be great if it did all this? Well, we have that now. Dan so, Jane knows where it's at. Yeah, so thank you for sending that, because often people kind of sum up things better than we ever could. Um, here's this some projects. Cool project. this, yeah, this one's from... Um, Scott, Scott Hasselman. Scott Hanselman, who, who has type 1 diabetes, and so he tracks... I guess he has a wireless uh, blood sugar tracker, and he has it appear on like, his computer and stuff, but he wanted to make a little display that all it showed him was, how's his blood sugar doing? Is it going up? Is it going down? Like, maybe just a simple color. This is kind of reminds me of the ambient display stuff that we yeah. saw like 10 years ago. So he has his own server that, you know, he doesn't have, it's not public, it's a private server he runs that um, he uploads his data to to log it. And then he made his Pi Portal uh, connect to the server, download the latest data and then update text and graphics with a little arrow um, using the, the font that has an arrow in, I guess, and um, it displays his current blood sugar. Yeah. He said he uses a Dexcom CGM, a continuous glucose meter, to manage his type 1 diabetes. He, the feed um, goes uh, up every five minutes into an instance of Night Scout open source software hosted on Azure, and then it gives him a REST API to his own body. And then so cool. he uses this 
eye portal as a glanceable display so he can manage his uh, blood sugar quickly and easily. I was like, slash so, proc, slash blood sugar. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, that's a great use of Pi Portal. Um, here's another great use. These are all ones that people have uh, shared and sent in. Um, this is from IBM Roanoke, and they have their jobs. And if it's, this is probably a JSON file or format. Mm -hmm. And uh, application developer full stack summer internship um, at their location. You click next, and it shows next time. This is a, I think it's called a Santa, and it's a, um, like... So it's a tag, it's a ticket system. Yeah, it's a ticket system. It's like Pivotal or Jira. Um, there's, a lot, there's lots of these to tell people what to do. And uh, <laughs> there is. And uh, this, uh, this displays it. This is another one where they got the data from it. Showed it on Pi Portal. Um, another one that I thought was kind of neat, since everyone's going crazy over the Avengers Endgame, um, someone made a, a great uh, poster series, and it just plays the different posters. Um, this is technically our first sports one. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is Splatoon. And it's like the leaderboard and the different battles that are coming out. This is out. totally sports ball. Yeah. Um, TG Techie showed this off on Show and Tell, but I also wanted to uh, mention this. It's really cool UI work for a, a, a keyboard. Um, and you can check that on our site and also in the newsletter. Um, Flit City DIY um, showed off her favorite chip and then also showed porting Arduino code to. Mm. Circuit Python. How do I get your own driver? Yeah. Oh, she puts in the bundle. Um, lots of reviews are coming out for the um, new NVIDIA Jetson. And uh, the thing that uh, Arduino Authority called out specifically is one of the key features is uh, this GPIO stuff that you can do. And what is on Jetson? Well, the Jetson Nano also has a set of GPIO pins. And it's good news, as they are Raspberry Pi compatible, the initial support is Adafruit Blinka, Python 3 library, and user land control of pins. So it is there for you to start doing stuff. Some events that are coming up. Um, Pi Ladies is in Dublin, April 16th. They have a MicroPython chat. PyCon, that's a big thing that uh, Ooh, we'll we're doing there. this year. So I think there's like six Adafruit people. Um, DigiKey and Adafruit teamed up. Everyone at PyCon, like all 4,000 people, are getting a special edition. DigiKey, Circuit Playground Express, Python-powered Circuit Playground. Um, Dan, Ketney, and Scott are going to be out there. And another thing about PyCon this year is there's open spaces. So on the afternoons of May 3rd, May 4th, and May 5th, explore your new Circuit Playground Express using Circuit and Python. Hosts are Katney, Dan, Scott, Melissa, Brian, and Brent. So that's all stuff that's going out um, to uh, PyCon, the devices, and our team will be there as well. Um, Everybody gets a free Scott. <laughs> yeah. We had other, um, we had other, uh, who was this? Yeah, we had other Python news. This is a cool uh, new library that someone's working on. We just want to make it easy to do uh, graphics like this. This is kind of nice. Python, yeah. And then um, some other stuff that we're working on. So circuitpython.org is almost, it's almost done. You've been cranking on it. Well, it, it's almost done as far as like it, the most useful resource. So yeah. I guess one, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just switch to us for a second. Okay. So Let's you, talk about software downloads. Well, so if you go to circuitpython.org yeah. slash downloads, you can see all the circuit Python powered devices. Yeah. And uh, when we all worked on this, one of the things that we looked at was how everyone else does firmware downloads. Yeah. And we determined it was all terrible. And Correct. And one of the stories, I was looking for firmware for something the other day. I think it was like a router. I was like, oh, I'll just update this router Cameras thing. are like, oh, yeah. And, and you go, and it's like, first select a like language. Like your mouse. First select the language. And then there's a pull down. And then you hit the pull down. And then like a gigabyte of like file comes down in the background. Your browser starts freaking. But in like maybe, okay, now you're scrolling. Now you're scrolling. And then and your then, mouse moves one if, pixel if do it right, to the right. And then as soon as you get one, and then it opens up another one, and another yeah. one, another one. And then, and then it does a pop-up. And so you have to agree to these terms. Yeah, and then, and then it says cookies. And then it says, now enter your email address, and we'll send you a link to it. And, and then if you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just do a Google search for it. And then it takes you to some shady site Spammy. called, like, downloads.com or something. It's like downloadmalware.com. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so. so what we did is something really nice. So um, we're, getting, we're getting closer. Um, you know, take a look. Do some pull requests. Um, we got most of the text in, most of the images. Still have some odds and ends to do, but goal is to get it done by uh, PyCon. Um, there's a few more days. This is one of the boards that showed up on there. This is uh, UChip, or I guess you could just say microchip. Um, this is a really tiny version of like an Arduino Zero, but it works with CircuitPython, so that's one of the boards that's in there. And they were able to put text in, and we have the board. You can download the um, firmware for it. And every time we do a new build, 
it stays current. Other words we added this week? Um, meow meow. Meow meow. I call it meowy meowy. Meowy meowy. <laughs> <laughs> and I will always call it meowy meowy. You can't help it. Because that's just what I'm going to do. And uh, we also have the Catwan USB stick. So we added a bunch of other boards, but that was uh, that was there. Um, help wanted this week's going to be a little different. So normally I'm like, oh, here's a job on the jobs board. Here's um, uh, skills that people posted. However, um, awesome Circuit Python, the newsletter every single week, the CircuitPython.org site. Yeah. We could always use your help. We're keeping up with everything that's going on, but it's getting tougher and tougher because there's so much going on. So if you uh, go to CircuitPython.org, we just added awesome up there. Click that, and you can see like the latest and greatest. We have um, a lot of opportunities for folks. If, if you like collecting and categorizing things. If you like knowing, do you want to like, organize things and put yeah. them into categories and tag them and just be like, it's so perfect? Yeah. Um, and we have, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of Python on hardware. So now, it's, now, it's actually getting to the point where you and I can't keep track of all of it. Can't keep track of it. So um, if you want to help out, it's in the awesome list. And then last up, um, because you know I don't have enough stuff to do, I've been researching the birthday of MicroPython. <laughs> Okay. I, will, I will find this out. So here's the current, this is the slide from Damien who made MicroPython. I think I'm going to say it's April 30th, 2013, because that's when he said start. And okay. when, when the creator of something says start, that's when it started. <laughs> okay. Kind of, so it might be coming up on, you know, six years soon. Yeah, and then by the end of that year. Yeah, got a, got a flash in LED in got, September. Yeah. November, yeah. In October, Repo. USB, and then made a video, and then Kickstarter, and then yeah. officially shipped everything out within a year and a half. Yeah, but I don't think the Kickstarter officially finished 2015. No, no, because that's like everybody, like the last person got the replacement yeah, order. But even I if think it, April 30th is a good one. Even if it is, I'm just going to say like April 30th, like people can argue. It's so good. People can argue on the it's internet springtime. and make fake accounts about who they're arguing with um, all they want, but... I think this is the way. I think this is the way I'm going to go. Okay. So I think I think it's going to be Happy Birthday, MicroPython, April 30th. Okay. Be six until years we old. find that's the official start. Until until a bunch of sock puppet accounts tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Check your email. All right. That's Python on hardware. Thanks everybody. Blink a blink a blink a blink a blink a time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>